What's going on guys, it's your boy j Ho bringing you a brand new video. So today we got another weekend, which means Zer has made a return to the tower. So uh, this is week 21, I believe, and uh, there's been a lot of disappointing weeks, and this one is also one of them, sadly. So here we go, here's his inventory for the weekend. Uh, let's start off with the Titan, we have the MK44 stand sides. Carry more ammo for heavy weapons and increases the duration of shoulder charge. Not that good of an exotic in my opinion. It's okay for PvP for striker titans, but other than that, it's I'd say a pass unless you really like to use striker titan and you play a lot of PvP and you like shoulder charging people. Uh, so other than that, I'd say a pass on this one because there are better titan exotics. For the hunter, we have don't touch me. Um, it has taking damage from melee attack makes you briefly invisible, increased reload speed with special weapons, and increased super energy gain from killing minions of the darkness. I really like this one in my opinion. Um, I'd say it's pretty cool just because every time you take hits from enemies, you go invisible and it doesn't have a cooldown or anything. So pretty much when you wear this, you can solo the abyss or the pit of the raid Crota's End. And uh, you can just run through it invisible, so it's pretty good. And uh, I'd say if you like to go invisible, if you like using uh, your invisibility tactics in a PvE, because this one's mainly for PvE, not really good for PvP, um, then you can go ahead and buy this. Um, so yeah. For the Warlock, we have Starfire Protocol once again. Carry an additional fusion grenade and carry more ammo for fusion rifles and heavy weapons. Uh, this one's okay. I think there are better armors for the Warlock like Praxic Fire or some people like Void Fang Vestments better um, for PvP and stuff like that but this one's a pretty good starting exotic if you're in that case where you need or you want a first exotic gear um, then you can go ahead and buy this but if not then you can go ahead and pass. Negative. For the gun we have Dragon's Breath once again I believe this was the exact same lineup of items um, several weeks ago when he was in the lounge area so um, this one has uh, this rocking can hold three shells and rounds fired from this weapon leave a solar flare after it detonates so Dragon's Breath isn't the best rocket launcher in the game obviously uh, Galhorn's better and I think Truth is still better than this as well in terms of exotics uh, but I think Dragon's Breath is okay. If you really want it, you can go ahead and buy it. If you need a good rocket launcher, it's it's not really good. It's just decent in my opinion. Um, but if you have one with tracking that's a legendary or I don't know, if you have a better one than Dragon's Breath, I'd say that's better. Like Hunger Crota is probably better than this or definitely is better than this. Um, so if you have that from the raid, then that's probably better than this and you don't need to buy this. But if you want to collect it or for other reasons, then you can go ahead and purchase this as well. Then we have the exotic engram. I believe this was also there that same week. He had the uh, gauntlet engrams because I tried to purchase this to get Don't Touch Me, to get a higher stat roll possibly, and not have to use strange coins. But um, I used some Motolite last week, so I don't have as many this time. I might buy one, maybe two. And open it in another video for you guys. Uh, so yeah, and then we have the exotic shard. For the upgrade equipped exotic section, we have Mask of the Third Man and Young Ahamkara Spine. I've been waiting for him to upgrade Mask of the Third Man. I really need it for my hunter because of the replenish health when you pick up an orb. Uh, I really wanted that for my hunter for Crota's and hard mode. Since there's no chalice now, having that perk is really good on your exotic gear. So that's really good. I believe the other ones are uh, Insurmountable Skull Fort for the Titans and Apotheosis Veil and Light Beyond Nemesis for the Warlock. So this is the only one for the Hunter though and now I just upgraded it actually. I'm working on um, leveling it up so I can uh, use it and get to 32 with this on and use it for quotas in hard mode. And then we have Young Ahamkara Spine, Helm of Inmost Light, Crest of Alpha Lupi, Skull of Dire Ahamkara and Sunbreakers. So, not any of them. I say this one is the best one to upgrade 
Um, for the other classes, I guess, I picked this one just because of the spawning more orbs and stuff like that. I think that's good for the raid. Orbs are really key in Quota Zen now, especially hard mode, because you need to get your supers for your titans to get the bubbles, uh, for regening health, like I said, so stuff like that. And then uh, for this, it's preference, they're both just okay. For the guns, we have Soros Regime, Thorn, Universal Remote, Pocket Infinity, Icebreaker, and Super Good Advice. Uh, Soros Regime and Icebreaker are the main two ones, and Thorn as well, the best ones to choose. And then Pocket Infinity and Universal Remote and Super Good Advice are probably the later ones that you would put in priority. Um, but Icebreaker, he sold the other week, so everyone has this already. And uh, you don't really need to upgrade it because everyone bought it on that one week. And Service Regime, if you missed out on it, he did offer it a few times, so you can go ahead and upgrade that. Also good for Crota Zen Hard Mode because it allows you to regen health. Um, but I'd say Red Death might be a little bit better for that if you do have a Red Death. So that's about it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. As always, like, comment, subscribe. Stay tuned for more videos. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.